I'm part of the Sketchy's 30 Places 30 Days class where we are doing landscapes. And the landscape that I do is of the lake where I live and I also do waves as part of this course. But I, today I'm going to do this landscape of Northeast Washington. It's the Columbia River. It is just over the border from British Columbia and you could probably see it British Columbia on a clear day back there, but this is near Northport, Washington. Now, if you're interested in the Sketchy's 30 Places 30 Days, you can get $5 off by using my code. Here it is, 30P30DMANOS. Use that to get $5 off the course. So I have already sketched this out and we are gonna go ahead and get started. Let me show you the colors I will be using for this. The main colors I will be using are Cadmium Scarlet and Cobalt Blue. Then I will be throwing in some colors like Windsor Yellow, Windsor Blue, Quinacridone Rose, Yellow Ochre, and Quinacridone Burnt Orange. I also have a light misting bottle because it's very warm in my studio and so it's nice to keep things wet and moist as I am painting and then I'm using a spitty spray bottle that when you spray it you can see the spitty spray come out of it so that is there for me also I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this sky and using a bigger brush, I'm going to wet the sky. I also want to use some tape under here so that I can use gravity to do this painting. So let's wet the sky. And now I'm going to take some cobalt blue. going to add a little bit of a cad scarlet into the cobalt blue. I really like this combination because it makes a nice gray. It's more of a blue gray is what I'm looking for. And this is drying a little bit because I don't want it too wet at this point. If I need it more wet, I can use this bottle here. And coming over here to my top corner, I'm adding that color in. Let's add a little bit more blue to this. The skies are very fluid, so you want to make sure that you keep this fluid as you're painting it. I also have a cloth here that I can tap my brush on. Now be sure to ask questions because I am on the chat with you and I can answer your questions as you ask them and I'm happy to do that so please ask them so I'm adding in some more of this color you can see that I added more water in that center to keep it soft and not as much color there I like a big brush when I'm doing these fast and loose washes. Let's add some more of that cobalt blue and cadmium scarlet. You can see it has a nice warm blue gray there. I'm trying to keep it more blue than gray. It actually starts to become a little bit too purple if you add too much of that scarlet in there. Now, it doesn't need to be exactly like the sky because like I said, skies are fluid and they're always changing. So who knows what it looked like two seconds after I took this photo. It changes constantly 
as it's moving. So it sounds like the wind is picking up here, which does in the afternoon, it starts to pick up. I'm going to just lightly mist the top because there's a few things I want to do up there as I'm working and I don't want it to dry too quickly. So I lightly missed it. And when I missed it, I missed it above the painting, not at the painting. I got a little bit on my photo. That's okay. And of course, this always dries lighter than you think it will especially if you've added more water to it. I'm going to come in and I am going to add some water up here. And I don't know if you can see this, but I actually added, oh, there's a dragonfly. Hello, dragonfly. I added some drops of water with my brush. So it will push out some of that color and create a few blooms. I love creating blooms in my sky. It just makes it feel like it is moving more and it's more fluid. This is a foggy scene, as you can tell. Now, before this dries here, I want to soften that into the land area right there. Adding some more dark in that corner. Using the same two colors. It's a little bit thicker paint now so that it gets darker. Let's just edge that at the top. Let's put a little bit darker through here. some of these clouds over there. Softening those edges on some of that, those clouds. I want to create a few blooms as it's drying I do that a fly has made its way into my studio this is what you get for living at the lake okay now I'm taking the spitty spray and I'm going to just lightly Spray a little bit on top of that sky. You can see how it'll start to create blooms. I really like that look. And if you don't like it, if you don't like some of the areas, take your light misting bottle and it should do away with it. Like I didn't like it up there, but I liked it more down here. Now I'm switching brushes. I'm going to come over to my number six brush and taking those same two colors, I'm going to add some Windsor Blue to it. I think the dragonfly wants to paint with me. And I'm going to add a little bit of my yellow ochre as well. Don't want too much of that yellow ochre. I just want it to be a gray green. Let's come in here. 
Now, if it starts to spread too much, that means the paper is too wet. So I'm going to find a few other areas that I can put this gray green into. Let's put that in there. And then I can come back and define it a little bit more later. I want that look of the mist coming down over those distant mountains. Let's add some more of that cobalt and that cadmium scarlet now. A little bit too green. That's more of the green that I want in here. Adding that in. And what I want to do is actually paint. No, I'm don't. I'm I don't know what I was thinking. Never mind, just ignore me on that. I'm gonna keep painting on this. I'm going to wet this area now and then start to work more wet and wet. Look at that sky. Let's come up and I'm going to drop a thing of water right there and see if it will push that out some more. And coming in over here. So I let this guy dry a little bit while I was working down here. And now I'm lifting color. back in and do a few of these trees back here, darkening them. So to get the look of these mountains in the distance, I did want them to be a different type of gray and a different shade of that dark. I'm going to lay it flat now. to create a few more blooms in the sky now that it's drying even more. So what I'm doing to create the blooms is just having water in my brush and letting it be pulled out onto the paper. Hey, I'm coming into my Windsor yellow now. I'm going to work on this area down here. Let's start with a yellow. Now, I'm hoping you can see all these trees in here, how there's all sorts of trees, but you might not be able to on the video. Let's put in that yellow. I'm going to add 
more blue to that gray mix that I already had, or that Windsor blue is what I'm adding. Let's grab some of that cobalt, that cat, excuse me, cadmium scarlet. It's a little bit bright, so I need more cadmium scarlet to tone it down. And I'm adding some more cobalt blue as well. It's not as brilliant as the phthalo or Windsor blue. So if you guys don't know this, Windsor blue, and I use the Windsor blue green shade, is actually the same as phthalo blue. I'm going to let that dry up here a little bit more. I still want to bloom over there. Maybe I'll spritz this on that side. Get a couple blooms happening. So I can tell it's too wet because it starts to spread too far. I'm softening the bottoms of this into this area here. There we go. I'm lifting at this point. Trying to make it look like there's fog coming down over into these valleys between the mountain ranges. And grab some of that yellow ochre. Put some yellow ochre right there. You can see yellow ochre back there. This is actually a very this is a fall scene. The falls here are beautiful. I'm doing my trees. Trying to find where it is not as wet to do these. I can see some trees back here that are not as dark because of the fog. So I'm trying to put those in and then I'm going to go darker as I come down. I'm going to build up these trees with different values. So I'm starting with the light value and then I'll go darker. See, I'm still mixing up that dark green is what I'm trying to achieve. I need to grab some more of that yellow. I will. And let's see how this works. That's good. That's what I want right there. So coming in darker, I can see this dark line here. 
move that out of the way. See this dark line here, and I'm going to put that in right about there. Now I want to start to go lighter as I go down. So I'm adding a bit of that Windsor yellow into all this mix. There are buildings there, but I'm going to ignore them. You see, I haven't done the tops of the trees there yet. It's because I'm still waiting for that back there to dry, which it is starting to. Sorry about that, I had to get rid of that big fly. So I'm going up and down with this and I'm gonna actually put my tape underneath now so that gravity will do the work, part of the work for me. Okay, I got an accident. And how do we treat that? We don't panic. I'm rinsing out my brush. While it's still wet, I can work with it. And there we go, all done, all gone. There's a reason why watercolor artists have lots of birds in their paintings. And that's because of what just happened there. You splash a dot of paint and it becomes a bird. Grab some of this, put some of this in here. I'm adding different colored trees. I'm gonna grab some of that quinacridone burnt orange. And down to the bottom there where it is along the river's edge. Let's make some cobalt in with it now. Might as well throw some up there. As long as the watercolor is still wet, there's so much that you can do with it. I can even take this part that's a little bit wet, I can take my brush and lift it and then take a tissue and dry it. And then I can come back in a few minutes and work with that. Let's go even darker. Taking my Windsor Blue and my Cadmium Scarlet. Let's grab some Cobalt Blue. Now it's even darker. So I'm going to come in and create some of these trees. I don't need to create every single tree. What I am doing is creating the impression of these trees. I 
I love that watercolor kind of paints itself. That's why I like mixing on the paper sometimes, like I dropped in that yellow. Of course, I'm mixing on the palette, but sometimes I like it to mix on the paper. I'm varying the trees along here. Some are closer to the river's edge than others. I want a few more yellow trees in there than what I can see in the photograph. Just drop those in. They're real watery mix. That's so that it pushes some of that green out, that dark green. And we'll create some beautiful blooms as if they're trees. You can see what's happening there. It looks like they're trees. Take some cobalt and some quinacridone burnt orange. And that right there. I did lose this a little bit back here, so I'm going to bring that in some just like so let's come back here same thing well, it's just a few spots that I did that in now I'm going to come over to this side and creating that land that is jutting out you need to make it darker so I'm adding cadmium scarlet to it Now the next thing I'm going to do is take my bigger brush, let's touch the edge of these, just has water in it right now. I'm bringing that down and even you can see my tree line right here where I have the trees and the bushes. I'm coming down slightly inside of that so that you can see the river's edge in between some of those leaves and those branches. Taking my cobalt blue again. Let's clean off this spot a little bit. There we go. Taking my cobalt blue again. And water usually reflects the sky. So I want it to be the same color as the sky, which is that cobalt scarlet. I've got a little bit much paint there. Painting live is interesting. I haven't painted live in a while, probably because of the pandemic, which is very true. Now I'm leaving that wet where it's at the very top. I'm going to leave that wet, rinse out my brush. I want a hint. I don't want it too dark. You can see in the photo right here that it's not very dark. I just want a hint of color there. So 
what I'm doing is actually leaving the lighter area in the center and I'm going to paint around it and then pull it in. Let's lift some of that color there where it's lighter. And then I use a wet brush for that center to pull it in. I just love painting. Painting's just awesome. Along this edge, I need to wet that. And you can see how I am going to tilt this up and then lay it flat so it spreads. Some more color over here. I feel like I need more blue in there. As I said, it does dry a lot lighter. And most of you probably already know that if you've worked in watercolor. Taking my smaller brush, I'm going to get that really dark color that I had up here with my Windsor Blue and my Cadmium Scarlet. Before this completely dries, I do want to add more of that in there. See that because this is still damp, you can see it's spreading softly. This part right here, now what you want to do is lift it up and then pull the paint down. So you lift the painting up and you pull the paint down. And if it's too wet, it starts to spread too much. So I'm going to wait a minute. I'm actually going to add some quinacridone rose to this mix to make it slightly darker and come in right along that edge there. So when things like this happen, I just, what I do is I play the happy birthday song in my head or the other thing we can do is start to lift some of that light line. I think it might still be too wet. You would think with it being so warm out, it wouldn't be this wet this long, but it is. Let's soften this. And come over here to this one. Do that reflection over there. I don't know if you can see that I've been tapping my brush on a cloth. Okay, now it's starting to dry enough that I can do this.
So that little bit of white in the a little bit of white in the river. It's not actually white. It's a light blue current that's going through. I'm lifting some in the river to show that. Okay, coming back to my dark. Let's try it again. And notice that I try it over on this side before I go up to here because that's where it seems to be the most blurred. Now I will start, I'm lifting up my board and I will pull down some of these trees. Adding some of that dark along the edge there. Let's take that dark again and let's go through with some current through here. Don't want too much. Make sure my brush is clean to do this part. We are going to now work on this area. My neighbors are leaving. I don't know if you heard that car. That's my neighbors. And darken this right through here. It's a bit bright. When I squint my eyes, I feel like it's a little bit bright. Okay, let's work on this. So taking my yellow ochre. I'm going to put some yellow ochre in here while it's still wet because I want to create some of those blooms. Okay, I'm going to hold this so you can see it. Creating some blooms along the edge there. And then I'm going to come in and do some fun stuff with this. If I were to do this in without the pressure of watching, of everyone watching, what I would do is actually wait for it to dry a lot more. making up that dark green now. Let's put some of that along the edge here. Soften it. I'm going to add a yellow green right through here switch my big brush so it goes quicker
You're going to go back and forth between my big brush and my little brush along this edge. Grab some quinacridone burnt orange now. If it's already dried too much, I'm gonna you can spray it. It has dried a little bit more than I wanted it to. Trying to see this while at the same time painting for you. So I hope you can see that. All I'm working on is the bottom area now. Let's get some of this color in. Use some um, quinacridone burnt orange with my cobalt to darken it. Okay, I'm going to take a paper towel or a couple of paper towels. And hopefully, this is dry enough that I can do this. I'm going to place it right over there and let's have a little fun. I'm going to start with some of the yellow ochre and I'm going to tap into this wet area. And let's grab some of that other yellow. I find this is a wonderful way to get all that foliage and all those weeds and grasses without having to paint every single one of them. Now I will move on to my quinacridone burnt orange. Can even use my spitty spray where it's dry. Need to move this out of the way. There we go. And let's grab this so I can see it. I just want to get an idea of what I'm doing. Oh, and my palette really gets messy by the time I'm done with all this, and I do too. So when I do this, I like to wear clothes that I don't mind getting messy in. Okay, so most of my wardrobe is like that because I paint just about every day, or I try to paint every day. Can you see why I covered that area up? Let's grab some more of that dark green. Let's make sure we get some of that in here. Just paint it in and then I'm going to splatter some in. So I need a little bit more of that dark green. Before I start this, I 
Again, it's the Windsor Blue with the Cadmium Scarlet, a little bit of Cobalt. And another fun trick to do with this is to throw in some salt. Just regular table salt works. I put a few things in my hand and then I toss it in. I don't want too much salt. I just want a few little grains of it. Okay, now I want to go dark with my quinacridone burnt orange and my cobalt blue. I am going much thicker with this and it's almost too thick. You want to make sure it does move when you do this. You see that my table's getting all wet. I mean, there's a reason why you have a separate studio when you want to paint. Kitchen table works too. I painted for years at the kitchen table when my kids were little and I didn't have my own studio. Years. And we ended up picnicking on the floor when I did that. Okay, I'm gonna move this away now. And I'm going to start to add a little bit more details along that edge and a little bit more detail in here and then it will be done. So taking my burnt quinacridone burnt orange and my cobalt blue, let's come in and do some branches over the water. grab some green for up here and add the yellow to that dark and just make a different green I'm gonna come back here I do want to splatter a little bit of that tree it feels more natural to me than if you paint it in sometimes especially if it's if it, you find that it's really messy and really difficult to paint every single leaf. It becomes nice when you can actually just splatter it in and let it feel like it's there. I'm coming back over here while this dries a little bit before I put in some detail there. And I'm going to just edge some of this, put in some more detail over here darken this up You see the salt effect half you can see the salt effect happening there. I want some salt effect right in there. I like that, but I wanted it up there more. Pulling that down. 
in some areas. I want more blue and more, more of the cadmium scarlet. Let's pull this down some. I'm going to smooth some of that out. Okay, and finally, finally, this is almost dry. I'm going to take more of that quinacridone burnt orange and that cobalt blue. Put in some of these branches. for my big brush. I don't know what I did with my big brush. It fell. All good. Let's grab another towel. There's my big brush. I feel like this got a little bit away from me, so I'm going to slurp that up, and I'll come back in after I do all this. Doing a little bit of dry brush now. Then I'm going to come in with my really dark green. Let's toss some salt in there. I've kind of lost that. So tossing some salt in there might help. So, and there you are. Looks about done. Yep, I'm going to call it good, and I will sign it probably down there. So, thank you. Thank you so much for watching and for attending this. That was fun, and I hope you really enjoyed it. Be sure to sign up for Sketchy's 30 Places, 30 Days. And like I said, here is a coupon code. You get four sorry, $5 off if you put this in. So thank you.